Another contract we're looking out for, Trevor Lawrence. He's in line for a massive payday. Take a look at the QB deals that have been handed out this offseason. Adam referenced it. Jared Goff got over $200 million over four years. 35-year-old Kirk Cousins got $180 million over four years with $100 million guaranteed coming off Achilles surgery. And Baker Mayfield got nine digits. Trevor Lawrence has two years left in this current deal, just under $12 million cap hit this year and a $25.5 million cap hit next year. Here's Doug Peterson on where the negotiations stand. Obviously, the sooner you get it done, right, it's, it's behind everybody. And now we focus on football. And, and so that's not lingering and that's not out there. Um, you know, I, I, I know Trent and his agent, <clears throat> excuse me, they've, they've continued to talk and will talk and, and they're working hard and tirelessly. And, and um, you know, I just got to gotta coach Trevor and coach football and hopefully it gets done and it will. Everyone gets a frog in their throat talking about that kind of money. It happens to all of us. <laughs> Adam, uh, I would what? not know. <laughs> I know. Me either, actually. Adam, what more can you tell us about the Trevor Lawrence deal? Well, I think the key thing that the Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson said there was this will get done. Mm. And so there is the full expectation from the Jaguars, according to Doug Peterson, that this deal will get done. The two sides have been talking. They've been talking for weeks. They've been talking since before the NFL draft in Jacksonville, which once used the number one overall selection on Trevor Lawrence, who has identified him as the face of the franchise, wants to get this deal wrapped up. The question again will be, what is the fair number? He, I would think, is going to be wanting to be right in the Jared Goff neighborhood, if not higher than that. Every player wants to get as much as they can, and there are some quarterback deals that are out there that are not done, and it just seems like the number goes up every time. Mm. It's not going down. Jacksonville wants to get it done. Trevor Lawrence wants to get it done. And I would think at some point this summer, as Doug Peterson said, they will get it done. It's just a question of when and how much. Yeah, these quarterback deals kind of just keep resetting each other, and that's real, right, Sam? But do you think Trevor Lawrence deserves elite money? Oh, absolutely. I think he deserves elite money. I think sometimes we look at Trevor Lawrence's rookie year and say, man, what happened? Right. Three and 14, I believe it was. Well, part of what happened is the Urban Meyer experiment happened and it wasn't successful. We saw how that team struggled and Trevor Lawrence struggled. But then the last two years, he's been extremely effective, even statistically over 4000 yards. And yes, there's been some injury history last year. We did see that. But he is everything you want in a franchise quarterback. He's getting better despite the first year struggles. And he's got his head coach, Doug Peterson, who's won a Super Bowl, who knows how to do it, especially at that position, and now may be calling the plays. And so for me, I think it's a no brainer to get Trevor Lawrence paid. And I think sometimes you have to forget about what happened early in his career because of the coach that was in place at that time. I mean, there's no way that we could sit here and say he deserves elite money right now. I mean, he's an elite talent and you would be paying him because you expect him to become an elite quarterback. You would expect him to finally vault into for the year in the top eight quarterback conversation. The last thing I'll say about this is actually is we have to stop saying top five quarterback in the NFL. There's way more than five really, really, really good ones. It has to become like a top eight conversation. Trevor hasn't like ascended into that just yet. I wouldn't rush and sign if I was Trevor Lawrence. I think that this is a year to your point, Acho, year one never actually happened. This is really my third year into the NFL, and I know there's a ton of pressure on him to live up to expectations. Doug Peterson, I don't know if we could sit here and I, the, there's no way that the Jags go elite money. He, they're 17 and 16 with him as a starting quarterback. Yeah, and He's got, what, 46 touchdowns, 22 picks. So good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Good but certainly not into that elite conversation just yet. Really fast, Dan, you think sometimes when teams pick a quarterback or a player in general, number one overall, it factors into wanting to Of course, go ahead and do every the general deal. manager right. wants to be right. It's and, a different and, group in yeah, some Yeah, totally. There, I, you would, if, if, if they decided to pay Trevor today what the Lions have paid Jared Goff, this is a we believe that you are going to become thing hmm. way more than we're paying you partly because what you've done. And I know Lewis Riddick says that all the time, right? Like the contracts in the NFL is about what we believe you're going to become, but that would be the example of if it became that elite money. Yeah, last year, Lawrence ranked in the bottom half of the league in QBR yards per attempt and touchdown to interception ratio. Important in the conversation. That they got to stay healthy. Here. They got to be better in the red zone. And again, he's got to make that jump into that top eight conversation over that course in third year, not fourth year, third year over the course of the season. We have a 
brand new series where Dan is going to talk about different aspects of the NFL playbook, explaining how the rookie quarterbacks will try and learn their new systems. You just can't get this anywhere else. Dan, today's lesson, personnel grouping. Yeah, Take to your away. point, Laura, the, the big challenge is all these guys making that change from college football. To your, we've talked about the installation of the playbook, how big it, how big it is. We've done the general terminology, we've done the cadence, we've done the huddle, and today we are going to go into the different personnel grouping. So we have to start with where the college kids come from. Most of these college kids, when they're playing in college, there's a couple goals. One, run as many plays as possible in the game. Number two, get to the line of scrimmage, and everybody's looking to the sideline. The coach is communicating and whatnot, so the play clock very rarely becomes any type of issue nor urgency. Everybody looks to the sideline. The coach communicates with hand signals or signs what the play is going to be, and they never have to really worry about being in that huddle and communicating a bunch in that huddle. This is the identity of college football that so many of these college kids were a part of. Now, the big thing for players like Drake May and Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams is they're going to huddle way more in the NFL. The, the one reason or the main reason why teams huddle in the NFL is to change the personnel grouping in college. Very rarely do you get guys running from off the field to on the field because they just stay with the same people. That's going to be different in the league. Now, the number one hurdle is understanding how you're going to call your personnel groupings for these young quarterbacks. Now, some teams, they go with verbiage, words, and some teams go with numbers. We'll start with base. Some teams might call it as base. Some teams might call it just as 21. So when we get into the numbers, it's important everybody at home to understand the first number means how many running backs are going to be on the field. The second number means how many tight ends are going to be on the field. So for these rookies, do we call it by words or do we to call it by numbers? The next level is understanding that they might go, if you're the Chicago Bears, the Bears might call it with base, and then they might go base, Herbert. Meaning, for those two running backs, the fullback would be off the field, and Khalil Herbert and DeAndre Swift would be on the field. So that's the starting point. The next one might be Tiger. Are we going to call it Tiger? Are we going to call it 12, which would mean, again, first numbers running backs, one running back, two tight ends. Imagine if you're the Las Vegas Raiders, and you have Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer might be your Y tight end, the blocker, and Brock Bowers might be your F, the pass catcher. What happens if you want them to switch? You might go Tiger Bowers, and that switches them. Then you go to Zebra. Zebra could be your 11 personnel. Are we calling 11 Zebra? Or do we have to call it 11, meaning one back, one tight end? If you're the Minnesota Vikings and you're J.J. McCarthy, Justin Jefferson might be your X receiver. But in some situations, personnel-wise, you want him to be your F or your slot receiver. You might call that Zebra LSU or Zebra Jefferson. So there's a lot of mm. attachments to that. Pony. Pony could be... 20 personnel, two backs, no tight ends. Let's see if you're if you're Jaden Daniels in the Washington Commanders. Pony might be two running backs with a Brian Robinson and, and an Austin Eckler, but what three wide receivers? It could be Pony and it might be McCaffrey since they drafted Luke McCaffrey. So another level to that. Those are going to be the four main ones. Then you can get into like an Eagle, which is one running back, four wide receivers. Then you get into Cinco, which could be your no running backs, one tight end, and you might have as a block catcher or a pass catcher. You is going to be like a, a condensed formation and then into Trey. So there's so much that has to go on when it comes to the communication of that. Now, we showed you the video of all these college kids when it comes to where they're coming from. Now, let's look at where they're going because number one in the NFL, play gets done, okay? Immediately when the play gets done, 40 seconds on the clock, three things have to happen for guys. One, you have to look at the play clock. Okay, where's my play clock at? 36, 37. Number two, what's the situation? Is it second and two? Is it second and eight? Is it third and six? And then three, you have to be communicating at that moment as coaches giving you the personnel grouping that's coming on the field. Hey, guys, we're going to get into Zebra, Zebra LSU. Then you have to think, Guys coming on the field, is that correct? Guys going off the field, is that correct? Justin, you're going to beat the F receiver right now. By the time all that happens, that 40 seconds goes down to 22 seconds. And that's why that person, and most of these teams are changing personnel. And look at Joe Burrow is calling the play, huddle in the play at 23 seconds. So there's another layer and level Amazing. for these young quarterbacks to have to constantly learn and then communicate on different levels. Okay, we're going to get Otto in here in just a moment, but I'm curious, if you really had to put your brain around the best to do this, not the rookies, how quickly do they get these calls out to, to make the offense function in such a great way and get people set? Like, if they're already yeah. set and they have time to think about what's coming next, it Drew obviously operates Reeves a lot was better. probably the best guy when it comes to the last, like, 12, 15 years in the NFL of handling and communicating that stuff. 
Patrick Mahomes right now is the best doing it just because that's something that Andy Reid does a ton. And Laura, to your point, like you're getting that information, you're communicating it to, communicating it to everybody, and then you're making sure that all those guys know <laughs> where they're going to get lined. Next week, we'll get into the formations. That's just the people that are on the field. Okay, don't miss next week. Dan's playbook continues. Acho, from the defensive perspective, when you know you've got a rookie quarterback that's trying to do all of this that Dan's talking about, how important is it for you to try to take advantage of that and maybe throw him off his spot a little bit? All the information that Dan just mentioned means something to defenses as well. So for me as a defender, I'm looking, okay, first thing, look at the personnel grouping. Is it 12? Is it 11? Right? We have guys hold up the cards that say, man, 01 personnel. Maybe it's Pony. Then I look at down and distance. Dan's going to get into it. But man, in first and 10, they run different plays than in third and three and less. And so I'm all evaluating what's the down and distance. Is it second and long? Is it first and five? Maybe it's a penalty. Then I go to situational football. Okay, now that I see this formation, what do they do in this formation? Teams run certain plays and put certain personnel groupings in order to run certain plays. And so you dwindle all those things down. You say, okay, these are their tendencies and 12 personnel sure. on second and two. And if they have the, you know, let's say they have uh, the tight ends are split out, all of a sudden, okay, it's not going to be a run. It's 70% pass in this formation. And so those are the things, the information that I try to take when I look at personnel groupings down a distance and formation. I think my favorite is zebra. Just gonna throw that out zebra. there. Zebra. I mean, it doesn't. What's it, the number <laughs> correlation to zebra? Uh, it was one, maybe. And, and what's the second number? And one. One. Uh, Could have been great. Two Laura. lines. Yeah, one and one. Learner.